So mathematics is a way of getting rid of um, fuzzy thinking <laughs> and w hand waving and, and therefore the dogmatism that can come with it because I know what's right. Um, because and if you try to come at me with some argument, then I'll just sort of change my view enough so that, so if, but if I put it down in an equation, then uh, it's hard for me to dodge and weave. It's not impossible, but it makes it much, much harder to, to dodge and weave. So, so mathematics um, is infinitely complicated. This is a Girdle, Kurt Girdle in 1930, 1931, when he was a young man, like 25 years old, proved perhaps one of the, the greatest intellectual achievements in all of human history. It was called Girdle's Incompleteness Theorem. And without going into the details, it, it, it entails that there's no end to the exploration of mathematical structure. There, in some sense, it, it seems to me that it, it entails that you can't be omniscient about mathematics because it, it just really, it, it, well, well, put it this way, the kind of omniscience involved would be stunning omniscience. Uh, it would have to, I would have to, it's beyond my conception of the kind of omniscience that would be needed to have a full comprehension of the math. Certainly any finite formal system is, Kirtle, Girdle shows us, merely a scratch on the surface of this infinite depth of mathematics. Um, and, and so that, that means that math is a two-edged sword here. On the one hand, it cuts through our dogmatism and our fuzzy thinking. And so it's absolutely essential. Because one thing we know about human nature is that you know, we, we, uh, we're dogmatic. We, we know what we know, and we know that the other guy's wrong. And, and uh, we're not in, in conversations typically to, to learn. We're in conversations to show other people that we're right and they're wrong, um, with, with happy exceptions. But with mathematics, um, when you're forced to state your ideas with mathematical precision, there's no hiding, right? And when I say, for example, that I think that consciousness is fundamental, and then I say, and here's what I claim the structure of consciousness is. And so I have to write, I write down some math. Now, now I get the other, so that's the first side of the sword, and it's wonderful, right? It really cuts through dogmatism and fuzzy thinking and, and dodging and weaving. On the other hand, Gödel has told us that essentially there's infinite wisdom beyond any formal theory that you could write down. Yeah, by proven by math itself, that's so astonishing. It's proven by mathematics. That's, that's really, truly stunning that, that the mathematics itself gives us the insight that no mathematics that we could do is ever the whole truth. And in fact, that there's essentially unbounded intelligence of mathematics beyond what you could do with what, so, and, and, and who knows, I mean, if, and mathematics isn't the whole world, so, but that's just part of it, certainly part of, the, of, of reality. And so already we know that reality um, transcends any mathematical theory. So that, that also entails that there can be no scientific theory of everything. And yeah, yeah, it makes us humble, right? Gödel, Gödel made us humble. It's, it's, it's very, very humbling. And so what, what we have then so someone might say, well, just throw up your hands. You know, let's just party and, and, and you know, we, we can't, can't know it all, then why know anything? And, and I think that that's the wrong attitude. It's not my attitude anyway. It, it, it is, um, we do have this wonderful tool and we do find that it is incredibly um, effective. Uh, Eugene Wigner said of the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in, in the natural sciences. He's, he was amazed at it and a lot of us agree. It's truly stunning that uh, using Newton and Newton's equations we can send rockets to planets and it works quite well. And with Einstein's equations we get even uh, you know greater fidelity and with quantum theory you know uh, well Maxwell's equations and quantum theory we're, we're talking uh, literally on opposite sides of the world using technology that would not be possible without the mathematics, absolutely not. Um, and and so, so the mathematics is at, at once empowering and it avoids dogmatism and it really then is humbling. Once, once you really understand it, it's truly humbling. And, and so, and I think for me, it then is a pointer to a way of thinking about what is consciousness about. If consciousness is all there is, then mathematical structure is only about consciousness because that's all it's there for it to be about. So, so then Gödel is telling us that there's no end to the variety of 
conscious experiences and conscious activity. Wh whatever consciousness is, is literally unbounded because mathematics is unbounded. Yeah, I'd love to go a bit d deeper into that, but I'd first like to ask you, you just said, I mean, it avoids mathematics, avoids fuzzy thinking, right? And we, um, I'd like to talk a bit about sort of the, the two paradigms, phys uh, uh, physicalism versus idealism. It's a big spectrum, of course, there's a lot in between, but could you sort of sketch our Newtonian worldview and how we always thought about uh, consciousness and why that felt so um, um, scientific or scientifically correct and and what quantum theory did to that notion. Right. So, so many of the early scientists, like like Newton himself, were were actually believers in God and 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 Christians, and and Newton apparently wrote more theology than than physics. Um, but his his the Newtonian world was essentially a mechanical world. You could write down these uh, differential equations, and if you knew the starting conditions with precision, then you could predict pretty much everything that was going to happen um, going forward. And and so it led others like uh, George Berkeley to you know, who was a a bishop in the in the Christian you know, uh, Church of England or something like that. Um, to come up with his version of idealism as sort of a counter to what he f viewed was the, the mechanism, the mechanical view of the universe that came from Newton. Um, so he, he it was a reaction in part against that. Um, and, but eventually, uh, you know, idealism had a heyday in the 1800s, um, but in the 1900s it, it s sort of died out. Um, largely died out, the success of Newton and the, then the success of, of, of Einstein's special and general relativity theories, um, and then the success of quantum mechanics. Now, with, with quantum mechanics, the early theorists, many of them, like Max Planck, for example, um, um, clearly thought that space and time were not the, fun, not the final thing. They, they thought, you know, Max Planck was very, very clearly thought consciousness was fundamental. And he, he, he said so. Um, and, and there was a period in which many of the early thinkers in quantum theory, you know, from like 1926, 1925, until World War II. So that, that period in there, uh, there was a lot of soul searching about what was quantum mechanics telling us deeply about who we are and the nature of the universe. And, and is the physicalist idea that space and time and matter are fundamental. So those, I mean, that's the, that's the physicalist idea. Space-time is fundamental, and the particles in space-time, you know, quarks, uh, leptons, and bosons, those are our new fundamental particles right now. Th that, that is the fundamental grounding reality, and everything else is just a complicated pattern of the interactions of, of those particles in space-time. Many quantum theorists begin to question that early on, but after the start of World War II, things changed. Um, it, it, we got the shut up and calculate kind of attitude because physics now, you know, and quantum physics, um, became put in service of, of the war, um, and, and it became highly funded, and it made the atom bomb, and, and all of a sudden it was a completely different thing. And, and so that, the, the early generation that started that were thinking, what does this really mean? That, that really got shut down in large part by World War II. Um, but, but more recently then, it, you know, like the conference that uh, we'll be having here at Chapman, um, uh, it, there's been a lot of thought now about the nature of what our current physics theories are telling. Quantum field theory now um, with gravity, you know, trying to understand how those interact. Um, has has led some, but not too many, um, physicists to to once again wonder whether consciousness is fundamental. That that I would say not. I don't know too many physicists. Um, um, I've been to an FQXI conference a few years ago on the role of the observer in, in, in quantum theory, and uh, it, it became very very clear there that. Um, the idea that consciousness might be fundamental was, was basically not on the table. It, 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 it's, it's not taken seriously. But what is taken seriously is that space-time is doomed. That's really interesting. You know? And we're, we're talking 
big, big giants in, in physics. Ed Witten has said that, who um, one of the ones who's been foundational in string theory, M theory. Um, Nathan Seiberg at the Institute for Advanced Study, and then uh, very influentially, uh, Nima Arkani Hamed, who is also at the Institute for Advanced Study. And, and it's, it's become very, very clear from the actual structure of the physical laws themselves that space-time cannot be fundamental. And this is, again, where the mathematics is really powerful. Just like Gödel used the mathematics to show that mathematics, at least any finite axiomatization of mathematics, can't be the whole thing. So the physicists are using the theory of space-time to show that space-time can't be the whole thing. And that is the beauty of the mathematics. It tells you where the theories stop. This is where space-time space is great. It's a wonderful framework for a while. And here is where it stops. It stops at about 10 to the minus 33 centimeters and 10 to the minus 43 seconds. It ceases to have any operational 